Driving yourself in, one more person and not available in the state of shock. Hey everybody, Dan Schindler here back on Drum Talk TV covering the Ox and the Loon still at rehearsals. Depending on when you see this, well, either way, it's still only day one. I'm here with Chad Smith Hi. from Red Hot Chili Peppers, yep. Chicken Foot, yep. Bonzo Bashes, and now the Ox and the Loon. How are you? I'm well. Good. I just... You just played your ass off. God. <laughs> you sound great. You like the kid? I played the kid earlier. How about so those cool, heads? Man. The mm. top head. It's so tight. It's like playing a tabletop. It's, um, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know, a lot of those those early 60s rock drummers in England were, were come from jazz background. And guys like Ginger Baker, Mitch Mitchell, Ian Pace, yeah. even Bonham, of course, Keith Moon, they tune their drums, the old jazz drummers tune their drums hard. Real tight, yeah. So it has a real tight, fun playing surface. And then, obviously, he got the pictures of Lily. Yeah artwork on it so you really feel like yeah. sitting back you're there. there it's awesome man. it makes you want to play like that yeah yeah and that yeah. snare that natal snare is only five and a half inches it sounds like it's 13 inches deep you know those are the drums you gotta just beat the fucking crap out of them yeah and it's so fun yeah and playing that music yeah it's incredible and the band is good brian who's we all know is an incredible drummer just played Young Man's Blues, and I closed my eyes. I thought it was freaking Pete Townsend. Yeah. He sounds awesome. Great on guitar. He's a really, really talented musician. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're really fun to play with all those guys. Yeah. How does Keith fit into your influences, Chad? Oh, Keith Moon was the first drummer that I listened to that put cymbal hits in his drum fills. Like before, most drummers either that I listened to, they would do fills, and it was at the end, you would bang, and that's where you would do your cymbal right. fill. And he was, you know, a true original. No one played like him. No one's played like him since. And But but for me, that's the first thing, other than the music, I love the music, but his drumming, um, such personality, and then hearing cymbal fills, and da 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 yeah. Who does that? <laughs> Instead of in and out of a solo, yeah. as Bonzo used to say, but a fill. Yeah, or, or, you know, yeah, exactly. Like the drum fills were on the drums and, yeah. and incorporate the cymbals um, was, was unique and new to me. But just his whole thing was just, you know, up until Keith Moon, most drummers kind of, you know, you have to remember, he this is the early 60s, you know, yeah. 63, 64. Um, you know, Ringo... And a lot of a lot of those drummers, you know, it was all about being in the pocket. It was swinging and being in the pocket, and um, being a real supportive role. And uh, Moon was out front, man, and he was just, and it was just his personality. That's who he was. You know, he was, he was a larger than life guy, and he played the drums that way too. And it was beautiful and inspiring. And um, he was a soloist with three other guys playing with him, basically. Pete played his instrument more like the drums when i sort of which is kind of difficult to do but when i really sort of study that music and listen to how those guys interacted to me anyway it sounds like pete was more leading the rhythm mm -hmm. and keith was playing more around it and what a lot of people don't know i think that um and i've heard roger dalty say this that he really played to the lyric Mm -hmm. and the rhythm of the lyric and supported it and played in the holes and accented with and he was the pocket yeah 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 and yeah. and and so it was such a at that time i think you know the, the roles are so reversed and sort of out the and then and twistle just this yeah all over <laughs> <laughs> with that sound yeah. and like what you know i don't think anyone ever played those sing. frets on a bass before ant whistle i mean chris squire did later getty I mean, lee but back then no one played it pioneers yeah. in the style and the way they played their instruments and i think any one of those guys in a different band it would have probably sounded like a mess yeah but with the who is in any band of great band the chemistry is everything and they made such a, for a three-piece, you know, the singer. I, 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 Just the right amount of everything. I think one of the greatest live bands. I mean, and I'm a big Led Zeppelin fan, and Led Zeppelin's had some good nights and some bad nights, so everyone has. But I think 
most people that I talked to that saw The Who back in their heyday, and even a friend of mine, Glenn Hughes, played when his band Trapeze opened for The Who, and he told me they were playing, and The Who was warming up backstage, and when they would stop their song here in a big arena, the, the Who's sound coming from backstage was louder <laughs> than Trapeze. Just for warming up. They were just warming up. Like the volume and 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 just they were probably the greatest live in their in their yeah. 69 70 live at Leeds and you know through mostly through the 70s to the early 70s no one could touch them they were larger than life in every way every musically way. the way they lived their lives and getting to the point where they had to travel in separate jets I mean in every way you know Alice Cooper is another um, I sound like I'm a real name dropper right here um, I've had the good chance of meeting Alice and talking to him <clears throat> and he was friends with Keith Moon and yeah. he would just say you know most people hear stories about Alice Cooper or you know whoever Bonham and and and, and you know Marilyn Manson or whoever right. and like he's like 20 30 percent of what you hear might have happened he goes with Moon everything and then, some. and then some and that would be only like tuesday from 10 a.m to 4 p.m <laughs> right he said he was an insanely crazy person that just lived life in his mind to his fullest and that was just doing things that that normal human beings just, just wouldn't do you know really loud in there buddy. yeah it is Bye, Tracy. And, and you know, with all that said, I've always heard that he was a real gentleman. And earlier today, before you got here, Belinda Carlisle came to leave something here at the office. And I happened to introduce myself and told her that I've been trying to get a hold of Gina because she's going to be involved with a uh, breast cancer benefit in uh, October. And she happened to mention, yeah, I had uh, dinner with Keith Moon when I was like 15. I said, really? Come do an interview. So Tell she, yeah, and she said what a he gentleman he was. Yeah. So he definitely was at both ends of the spectrum. And maybe that's the thing. There was no middle ground for Keith, perhaps. I don't know. I didn't know him personally, obviously. But I mean, John Bonham and Keith Moon are probably my two favorite drummers. And... I probably would have wanted to jam with Bonham and party with Keith Moon. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't be here right now if, <laughs> to I, tell had, about it, if yeah. I had that opportunity. <laughs> but uh, Might not have even survived that jam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Certainly not that not going out afterwards. Right. But um you know those those that decade of the seventies and the late sixties too, but the seventies you know, that was unchartered. Yeah ground for to yeah. waters for culture right. rock music lot, and there was so time. much more latitude by the record companies back then it was a whole different business whole different world and those guys just did whatever they wanted to do you know there was nobody telling them no yeah. you know it was only like yeah let's let's switch gears a little bit i want to ask you about something um that you can talk as much as you want about and i know that's a lot of or, latitude or as little <laughs> Yeah, or as little, absolutely. Tell us about the charity situation between you and Will Ferrell. All right, we're going to... Um, I don't know if your, your drum talk people know, but um, there's an actor, Will Ferrell, who claims to be me. <clears throat> I guess we now, have A lot some, of people claim to be you, but he kind of tries to pass himself off. I guess he sort of has a physical resemblance. Slight resemblance. Kind of beady eyes or something. But... Um, so he decided, for whatever reason, to say, I am Chad Smith. There is no Will Ferrell. And I, I saw this and I'm like, you're a dude. Wait, did you pull your ID out and look at it? <laughs> I go, dude, you. So I, I, we had a little back and forth on, I uh, forget what it was, Facebook or Reddit or some social media. And I said, uh, you are obviously a very delusional human being who's gone off his medication. And you are a, an imposter, and we need to settle this once and for all. Obviously, I know who I am, and so I challenged him to a drum off, drum battle or whatever, and he accepted. And we um, raised a lot of money for charity, 
Cancer for College, which is really great, over $300,000. And we are going to battle next month, May, in May, towards the end of May, okay. in, in a public forum. I can't say where or when. Well, by the time this airs, you'll we'll be able to say. So it's on the screen now. Yeah. Tap into it. If you can't make it in person, there's a website where you can still donate to the cause because that's important. Even if you're physically not able to be there, at least contribute. Whoa! It's, it's like loud in there. it's like we're trapeze right now. <laughs> Anything else that you want to talk about that you're working on or that you can talk about? Oh, we're just writing songs with the Chili Peppers. Great. Making another record, you know, this year. So really that's it. And, and we're playing, speaking of The Who, we're playing the Isle of Wight Festival in, oh, wow. in England. June 21st or something. Okay. Or 4th. Something. And uh, that's exciting to play that. That's a very, um, you know... It's a covenant Story. gig. Yeah, you know, the Doors and the Who, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of great bands will play there, so I'm excited for that gig. But, um, yeah, just writing songs. Good, good. Yeah, cool. man. That's it. Very cool. Thanks for joining us. Like I said earlier, we'll get together. We can do a more full-length, in-depth interview about your whole career. Yeah, for sure. Definitely do that. Chad Smith here on Drum Talk TV. Again, people care. They've been blowing up your, your interview from the Bonzo Bash back in May. You kidding? Yeah. And now, the Ox and the Loon, and then it's going to be all about Chad Smith's illustrious career. The in-depth story here on Drum Talk TV. It'll be very short. There it went. Oh, the Jimmy DeAnda story. Real quick before we go. Oh, no. So we Not inter true. We interviewed Jimmy DeAnda. Yes. He's a big friend of this I show. Love, I love Jimmy. He told us the story Which about one? Which one? The, the, yeah, exactly. The clean one. It's a family Me show. Jimmy. When I moved to California, is it the lighting gig? story because that's the one he told us the lighting gigs he was playing somewhere they were either rehearsing for a show or shooting a video oh, and yeah. you were way up on a lighting rig i was working the video yeah for uh smooth up in ya. i think it was that one or or uh or for the love of money what was it whatever their first record was before i joined the chili pepper i worked on videos i was like part of the crew you know, the art department, sweep up, whatever, whatever. I would do anything. Yeah. Go get coffee. And um, so the Bullet Boys, Jimmy's band, was doing a video. And I was running the spotlight. Yeah. So I was up in the, you know, whatever those things are. And, and I don't know if I, like, met him or not. What, what did he say? He, he said what that it was a break. It was hot in there. And he looked up to you, the lighting guys. He said, and you guys want water. And, and you said, yeah, I'd love water. He was throwing up bottles of water to you guys. Nice guy. Oh, see? And then he met you, like, later in the day, came down, and you end up, you turned out to be I mean, same thing. Humble beginnings. Humble <laughs> yeah. beginnings. And that's important to tell about, I think. You know what I mean? And you're still humble. I think that's one of the reasons people love you. You're so down to earth, still humble, and that's important. You know... If there's anything that I, I and I, 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 everything happens for a reason, and I don't have any regrets, and but when you're a young person and you get in a business, entertainment business, and for me the music business, sometimes you can, and you have success at a young age, people open doors for you like you're an old lady, you know, and they give you things and they say yes and whatever you want. That, that's when you conduct yourself the right way as you're coming up. That's the difference, Chad. On the way up, if you step on people's toes on the way up, they'll kick you in the ass on the way Yeah, they'll be closing doors on you rather than opening them for you. And and I don't know that I conducted myself in a always a, a, a humble sort of a, a way. And, and um, so I think that if my older self could tell my younger self, it would be like, you know what? Be cool, man. Be humble and, and appreciate what you have. And um, I think that's, I think it's really important because treat people how you want to be treated. Right. And I see it, man. I see people 
just, you know, sometimes act like assholes, you know? And, yeah. and I well, just, I just maybe they're go. not acting either. That's the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people are assholes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just, I think it's important to, to, um, to stay humble and, and, and remember why you're doing what you do because you love it. And it's a gift to, to play music for other people and have them enjoy it. I mean, I, I'm fortunate. I get to look at people. We just played in South America where they go freaking crazy. Yeah. And they're so happy. Our music puts smile on kids' faces. And that's such a gift to be able to do that. And I don't take it for granted at all. And I'm so lucky to be able to do what I love to do, make a living at it. And um, I, I never forget that. So. Yeah. It's important great. for people to remember. Whether you're playing in clubs, whether you're playing with your friends in a basement, whether you get lucky and you, you can make songs and people want to see you play, go play some clubs and you can go on to do other things. You know, it's like the greatest job in the world. Yeah, I love it. Great words of wisdom ah. from Chad Smith here on Drum Talk TV. <laughs> Kiss your mom! That's right. Thanks for joining us here on drumtalktv.com.